with us right now was a man who was actually there in Bali when it happened, Mark Reddings from Channel 7. Mark, good morning. Good morning, guys. Uh, nice to be here, although the circumstances are a little strange 20 years mm. down the track. Mm. 20 years, mate. Uh, so paint a picture 20 years ago. You had young daughters at the time. You were over in Bali at the time, uh, holidaying at the time. And you were unfortunately in the bars at the time. In a nutshell, we arrived that night. I said to my wife, uh, look, the twins were about 18 months old. I went with my cousin, his girlfriend, went to Seminyak. It was pretty yeah. quiet. Jumped in a cab, went to Kuda, uh, had one drink in the Sari Club. I felt, for some reason, a little bit uh, just not comfortable. Yeah. So we went across yeah. to the Paddy's bar. Uh, my cousin, his girlfriend, stayed there. I went back out the front of the Sari Club. Um, I was on holidays. I decided yeah. to buy a pack of, as they say, durries. On yeah, a, yeah. a couple yeah, of looseness. Yeah. Did, didn't didn't barter with the uh, young man with the the, uh, the tray, and yeah, uh, then a... stepped back into Paddy's. And my first step back in was the explosion. And oh. from there, of course, it all went. Uh, Went haywire for everyone there. And you, you were saying just briefly then when you sat down that uh, when you came out of Paddy's, obviously com commotion everywhere and um, the confusion, but you went left instead of right and right was where the next explosion was. Yeah, that was the Sari Club. That was the big bomb. That yeah. was a truck which had oh, yeah. just so much power to it. That's where, of course, a lot of people lost their lives. But as soon as I left Paddy's, the first three or four seconds I, I said to myself, and I'm wondering where to go, is this feels like, my or our September 11. Yeah, now, yeah. I was yeah. only just, just feeling that way, of but course. I didn't quite understand until I got back to the hotel. And obviously, just very briefly, I, I went left for about uh, 30 seconds and then I realised my cousin, his girlfriend, yeah. I, I had to go back. So everyone's streaming out of Paddy's and Sari's trying to find shelter or get away from the, the flames. Did you think bomb You're straight away this. or maybe an accident or something? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe gas explosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, so Paddy's in essence was where uh, Peter Hughes, who suffered yeah. really bad burns, and Jason McCartney, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, those guys who were quite recognisable, uh, they were caught up in that with the suicide bomber. Mm. So anyway, I did find my cousin and his girlfriend, and it's very hard when you're walking towards the chaos and people are running that way. I thought, I can't. Go, can't go back to the hotel yeah. and tell my, my auntie, for instance, that I, I've left my cousin back there. So luckily they came out and we, we emerged. It, you know, obviously lost a lot of people that night. Yeah. How long did it take? Was it that night or, say, the next day when people realised, oh, hang on, this isn't something innocent, this is dark, this is this is actually a terrorist act? I think by the next morning we realised mm. because just the, the enormity of the explosions. Mm. And, and, yeah, look, I did a lot of media stuff for, for Nine and, and for radio. I oh, know the brick mobile phones yeah. going back 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, cheap bill. Oh. It was about five grand, but yeah. uh, oh, luckily I didn't have to pay that. But, yeah, look, 20 years down the track and I, you still think of – I went through a lot of time afterwards in brief about – just survivor guilt, I think it was. I, mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't wow. see counsel enough, but it was certainly a case of I just really struggled to think, how come I survived? And other mm. people, mm. like, they've lost their loved ones, their daughter, their son, their husband, their wife, and, and people would say to me, hey, mate, your number wasn't up. Yeah. And I'd say, you know what, that's great. But, you know, yeah. go and tell the parent of someone who lost someone, oh, your, your kid's number was up. So I was coincidentally really just down the road and you could yeah. have been there 30 seconds later, essentially. Exactly. So it was very yeah. hard to process how I survived and others didn't. Without going into details, it, it must have been fairly, well, confronting. I mean, the, the carnage that you would have seen due to the blast. I think so. I mean, I, I, mean, I, was, I was one of the first in as yeah. in, and luckily one of the first out. So... If I've saw stuff, it's certainly been blocked out of my mind. But I do remember walking back to Seminyak and a K, two Ks down the track, there were glass windows shattered. Jesus. Just shows the enormity yeah. of that blast. Yeah. The uh, Just recently, I think it might have been last week or the week before, Umar Paddock was mm. uh, released. Uh, the bomb should, maker. Yeah, the bomb maker. Mm. Yep. Does that sort of stuff sit really uncomfortably with you? Yeah, people ask me that all the time. And do you know what? I've actually never had, had a thought for the perpetrators. Mm. I've always thought of the victims and the family. Mm. So, and there's a lot of anger. I totally get the anger. And yeah, a lot of me says, how the hell is he getting out now mm. at this, I guess, anniversary time when other people are still going to have these raw memories yeah. still come to the surface? So, uh, I couldn't give a rat's about those blokes, to be honest. In yeah, fact, yeah. I, I just don't give them the time of day. Yeah. I'm more concerned about people that have been left behind. Yeah, for, say you were there at least four days after the blast. Is that right? Or yes, more? yes. I, I, was, I decided I was determined to make my family stay for a holiday, which obviously oh. wasn't going to be. Well, <laughs> you just get into that mindset. And yeah. I ended up working and the kids got uh, chicken pox. It was a great trip. It was really fantastic. Because <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I know um, I worked with a woman whose brother passed away. And in that time, that short time that you would have been there, she was going through all the emotions of, um, we, we hope he's out there. We hope a family's mm. just found him and they're looking after him. 
What was that like? Was it just the people trying to find everyone? Yeah, you know, and that the, just the big memory that I had the next day and I was doing news reports was walking past shops and, and the, the local TV, they just had such graphic images. Mm. We would never oh, show yeah. the images that they showed up in Bali at the time. Mm. And, yeah, you, you, you heard of people going to the, the morgues and going to the hospitals to try and find uh, their loved ones. And, and to be honest, I was I was like a, a space cadet. People said on my TV reports how calm and composed I was. But, yeah. in essence, you can imagine, yeah. I was just in shock. Yeah. What like were the it. locals like? I know that's the, the vast minority would have were involved in it. Were they embarrassed at the time that their country had oh, done this? They're great people. Yeah. They're beautiful people. Mm. So ninety nine point nine percent, they are such mm. nice people. So you know, that's I'm going to go back to Bali this year and, and for a holiday. Um, just Tell after October twelfth, I'll knock over a couple. I'll go to the wide <laughs> bar, have a bit of beer, and you and I do it beautifully there. And say, don't worry, we'd, we'd have a nice time up there. But I'm going to go up there to support them because they've been through a tough yeah. couple of years, obviously through COVID, and obviously going back to that stage. Yeah, they were they were knocked around quite a lot by the the fact that people just abandoned Bali because of the bombings.